and center stage. For Kwame Nkrumah, the man who had embodied the spirit of hope for black Africans everywhere, there was to be an undignified ending. From the 60s, my father was preaching very loudly on anti-imperialism and anti-neocolonialism. And this didn't go well, down well with the Western powers. And so one felt there was also considerable machinations from external forces to topple the government. In March 1966, while in China en route to Hanoi, Nkrumah was deposed by a military coup. You know, this was part of the Cold War. You see, unfortunately, uh, Kwame seemed to uh, rely more and more on the Eastern group as against the West. And of course, they didn't like it. The Americans, the Americans did, not, uh, did not like it. With Nkrumah deposed and Lumumba assassinated, only Sekuture was left to pursue the vision the three had shared. In the end, though, he too would be accused of despotism in the running of his country. Many Ghanaians, however, blamed this on the West. Il a lutté jusqu'au dernier souffle de sa vie, parce que tous les jours que Dieu faisait. Tous les complots sont vrais. On vous dira, c'est pas vrai, c'était vrai. C'était ourdi par le camp occidental globalement pris. In a final moving gesture reflecting their years of friendship, Sekouture invited Nkrumah to be co-president of Guinea. From exile in Guinea, Nkrumah watched as African independence was undermined by the politics of the Cold War. Often, the result was chaos and bloodshed. Up until his death in 1972, Nkrumah insisted that the only hope in the face of all this was the unity of African nations. There was a lonely voice somewhere shouting. People thought he was scaring, unnecessary, calling wolf, wolf, wolf. One can only be proud of him. One didn't follow his footsteps, but one can only be proud of whatever message he was trying to shout at us, and most people were not listening.